The music business is all about leverage. In my videos on why your favorite musicians are broke, I detail the contracts that new artists sign that leave them earning significantly less money than they were led to believe. Major record labels succeed by signing artists with little leverage into deals that allow the label to earn multiples on their initial investment if the artist blows up. I was sitting in a basement with no industry people on my phone, dropping a song a week from the basement and going to sleep and waking up and hoping it had a million plays. And it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, and then finally it started getting a million plays after about 50 weeks in a row. What if I told you that a 28-year-old rapper from Atlanta figured out the game in 2011 and has paved the way for independent artists to earn millions per year off their music? It's more like this whole game is not what the it looks like. You know what I'm saying? Like, majority of these people are not paid. You know what I'm saying? Majority of these people are not actually popping. They just get talked about in the media and they're broke. I may have talked about why your favorite artists are broke. Well, Russ doesn't fit that description at all. Major record labels hate Russ because he's been providing the blueprint to stay independent and make millions for a few years now. Sadly, many people are turned off by his tone and aggressive attitude to overlook the gems he drops. The best marketing for an artist is the artist themselves. That's it. Period. That's it. That's it. That's the secret that people don't but because they're so conditioned to rely on labels and they think be, because it's, it's a brainwashing. That's how it's almost like it's almost like getting kidnapped and you've been kidnapped for so long that you don't realize that you're that it's a toxic relationship you're in. Russ is outspoken, arrogant, and loves to call out the fake BS in the music industry whenever he can. He rubs some people the wrong way and may not even make music you like, but I think he's hands down one of the most enjoyable interviews to listen to regarding the music industry. Russ will always have my respect. The ability for someone to make 11 albums, only attain 1,000 followers, and still pursue a career making music is a level of confidence that I can appreciate from afar. Imagine having so much conviction in your ability to reach your dreams that you don't quit and try a different path after releasing 11 projects. He released more music than some artists do in their entire careers before his TuneCore ever started paying the bills. In a short period of time, so from 2011, December 2011, so basically, 2012 to the end of 2014 i put out 11 projects and you know when i say none of them worked i mean that none of them made me blow up none of them i didn't drop any of them and get like followers or anything at the end of that 11th project i had a thousand followers on twitter russ looks like a genius today but i can almost guarantee that many of his friends and family were telling him to choose a different lane or career after he spent years making music in the basement and not having any success the years of not succeeding can be heard in his voice today. You can understand his animosity towards the people who hate on his arrogance when you understand how long his journey was to get to where he is today. I bought my house. You got to understand, right? Like before I had my house, I was just living with my parents mm -hmm. and on the road. Like I remember making, you know, $11 million in a year driving my 1997 mm -hmm. Nissan living at mm -hmm. my parents' house. A lot of videos on my channel discuss the fake entrepreneurs on social media and how most of what you see on social media is not as it seems. I love seeing Russ discuss the fake reality created by many artists in today's music business. There's nothing fake about Russ's success. A lot of artists present a life of wealth and fame immediately after signing a deal, so there's something so pure about an artist making 11 mil in a single year and driving the car that got them there. This actually reminds me of Ludacris' story and how he still owns his 1993 Acura legend. Like, this is a fake ass industry and a fake ass world, and I'm not with it. Like, y'all not about to tell me that promoting fake shit is doper than real just because I'm more harsh about it. Russ resides within the hip hop and rap community and knew from the start that the industry's foundation is built on a mirage. Most artists are selling a lifestyle, a dream, a fantasy, because that's what sells the image. Similar to fake gurus and entrepreneurs, a lot of the music industry is sold through social media and your perception of what you believe their life to be like. Many artists' music only come alive when your perception of their life and their songs is matched by what you see on the gram. Russ lives within their same atmosphere, but he has no problem calling out the fake he sees in nearly everyone else. People are so popping, like, what a sick life, I wanna be doing that shit, like, and you're paid, whatever, whatever, but it's like, you're not. You're not that paid, you're not that popping, you can't sell tickets, you don't sell music, like, everything is rented, you owe people money, it's all like, it's, it's really not what the fuck it looks like. 
Russ is the antithesis to the music industry. Long known for trapping artists into bad deals, Russ has created the best deal ever within the music industry, complete ownership. There is no advance money that needs to be paid back. There is no royalty split that leaves an artist years away from making money from streams. There is no section in a contract detailing how he will only be keeping 50% of his touring money. He keeps all of it, 100% complete ownership. How did Russ have the ability to own a catalog that generates millions of dollars per year? This is not an accident. This is like, it's planned, it's planned, so. He planned this path long ago. I think one of the most beautiful things in life is watching someone achieve their goals while blazing their own path. Russ could have given up a long time ago. Russ could have signed a deal early in his career so that he'd have a little money to flash for Instagram. Russ could have gone the traditional route of signing to a label and then complaining about his deal later. He could have taken short-term advance money over long-term potential earnings. I just, I just didn't want to sign with the label till I had leverage. For someone so young, it is really impressive how Russ understood how the music industry worked and the value of leverage. Major record label contracts rely on leverage. Major labels want to find an artist who is gaining momentum but still has no leverage. Leverage is the ability to set your own terms and have the ability to walk away from a meeting with a major label when they don't agree. The thing I pride myself on the most is that I went and got leverage before I started talking to labels. You know what I'm saying? I, was, I sold out my debut European tour. I sold out my other tour. Right. I was already charting on iTunes and Billboard and, and Kylie Jenner was playing my shit on the snap. You know what I mean? Before yeah. I even talked to labels. Unfortunately, many young artists have no money, aren't interested in a day job, and aren't interested in making 11 albums before they blow, so they sign the deal. They sign on the dotted line when they have no leverage. Artists just be jumping at like, yo, he said he's got 300K for me. It's like, bro, like, there's so, like, the advance is the least important part of the deal, you feel me, but. That's how the music business works and how bad deals get signed. When you're young and dead broke, $1 million sounds like a lot of money, so you sign. But you don't realize that the 1 million is actually an advance and is really only about 350,000 in your pocket. So let's say a rapper signs to a label gets a million dollars. Right? Okay. That a million, most of these rappers are paying their manager 20%. So 20% is 200K, right? Most of them are also paying the lawyer five and the business manager five. So that's 10% for them and 20 for the manager. So it's 30% total commissions that has to come off the top. So of the a million, take off 300K, right? Because that's 30%. So you're at 700K. Of that 700K, you are now in the tax bracket that's taxed around like 48%. Let's just call it 50, right? Cut that in half. 350. So a million dollars is 350K net. That's what you net. This is before you spend a dollar. The reason why motherfuckers go broke is because they get a million and think they have a million to spend. How did Russ get leverage? He spent years building a catalog, writing, producing, mixing, mastering, and recording his own music. If Russ was going to succeed, he would be the reason. If he was going to fail, his music simply wasn't good enough and he'd need to improve. He didn't need the validation or a safety net of a major record label deal. Everyone is down to listen to one song. It's getting to that second song that pisses people off. And it's like, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Instead of dropping three mixtapes a year, let's call it, instead of dropping 52 songs total a year over the course of three mixtapes, and really that all that means is three posts a year. Here's one post of an album, here's another one, here's another one. I was like, why don't I drop the same amount of music, but just differently? And why don't I drop one song albums every week? Because I know off of just studying the analytics of the game, I know y'all are all down to click on one song. So I'll just drop a one song album every week until I blow up because I believe in the music. So I think one of the reasons why I enjoyed listening to Russ in interviews so much is because I can relate a little bit to his come up. I spent five years making over 100 videos, probably about 125 on YouTube with no views or income. And I certainly had less than a thousand followers. Russ made songs. I made videos. We both believed in ourselves to keep making product even when the market hadn't caught on. I wrote, produce and made all of my YouTube videos and own 100% of the media. The entire income comes to my bank account, complete ownership. Once Russ started to blow, he did sign a distribution deal to Columbia Records, but here's the difference. At that point, he had a large enough fan base spending money on his product. He had a large fan base streaming his music. He was making more money than he could ever spend. 
Most importantly, he had the leverage. He could walk from a deal if they didn't accept his terms. It turns out they did. I partnered because I had leverage. I got the exact deal that I wanted. I think that's super important for artists to understand that, you know, go in there with leverage so you can dictate. You know, I went in and got a profit split. Unfortunately, all new artists aren't in position to make 11 albums before making any money. Most new artists need to pay the bills and want to pursue music full time. So they sign the deal and some blow up, most don't. If you've been paying attention at all, Russ has been providing the blueprint for being one of the most financially successful artists in the industry today. And he did it his way. Love him or hate him, he's been preaching complete ownership for many years now. If new artists begin following the Russ model, we may see deals start to favor artists more. Until then, Russ is going to keep sharing the blueprint with anyone who will listen. Full transparency, I'm gonna show y'all that you can make a million dollars a month and not talk to anybody. That's my fucking goal. And I know, I, pro I look, I promise you, within a year, within a year of this conversation, within a year of this conversation, I'm posting a receipt of making a million in a month on my own. I believe. Promise you.